Our first uh, speaker this afternoon, uh, this afternoon is uh, Curtis Pitutus. Piti, uh, Pititus. Uh, Curtis is uh, somebody that I admire and look up to uh, in the realm of uh, storytellers and uh, leaders in the uh, area of uh, indigenous theater. Somebody that is well respected across Canada for his work uh, right here with the Saskatchewan Native Theater Company. He's originally from Beardies and <clears throat> since 2001 he's been working in uh, theater, radio, drama, music and film. He's got a number of selected highlights that hopefully he gets to be able to tell you about this afternoon. He's one that uh, leads with our young people through this Saskatchewan Native Theater uh, program and we're honored to have him here today. So please help me welcome to the stage, Curtis Peditus. Okay, check one, two, I guess we're live here. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, as Ryan said, my name is Curtis Peditus. I'm very honored to be here. I want to thank the people of Think Indigenous for bringing me here today. Primarily Chris Scribe and Irene Oaks for asking me. Chris sent me an email. And he goes, oh, we want people to start thinking indigenously about education. And I went, oh, okay, well, um, that's cool. And he goes, you want to come and do something? You want to come and share with us? And I said, sure, I, I, can, I can talk for about 20 minutes. Uh, people call me a storyteller. Sometimes I might not be considered as much. But today I'm here to talk with you a little bit about who I am, what I do, and why I do what I do. Uh, let's start with first me. My name is Curtis Pititus. Hello, everybody. I am from the Duck Lake area. Beardies and Okamasis is my first nation. I'm a little bit freaked out up here. Holy smokes, all the lights are on and all these faces are looking at me. I'm like, holy. For me, it was like, yeah, I just came out of there like a theater actor. <laughs> Us theater people, we think we're so important. Ugh. Ugh. So today, uh, folks, I want to talk to you a little bit about the importance, the value, the necessity of theater, not only in terms of an educational contextualization, but also in terms of the values of expression, of education, of empowerment, and of entertainment. I'd like to start today off uh, by introducing what I call the Circle of Voices. I work at the Saskatchewan Native Theatre Company and we have a youth program we run from October till March of every year called the Circle of Voices. And we take young people into this program. We ask two things, passion and commitment. These young people come and join us in the program, which is an evening program. They are joined and led by our coordinator, by a resident elder, and they are experienced, mentored, and trained in the areas of theater, culture, and career development. The young people in this program work with professionals in the theater community to gauge, to learn, to experience the performing arts from a professional standpoint, and then the young people culminate this experience by putting on their own theater production. The last theater production that we did put on was by Donna Michelle St. Bernard, a revered playwright from Toronto. And the show ran uh, February 25th to March 4th, and these young people were so empowered in this show. It was called The House You Build, exploring the traditions of contemporary and traditional cultures, and how they clash, and how they form identities, how they form worldviews, and where the conflicts are, and where the dynamics are. It's a whole world of learning. The symbol up behind me here was created by one of our youth in the very first Circle of Voices program, which was in 1999. And the young people of that program worked with a playwright, Deanne Casocchio. They worked with Floyd Fable. They worked with Kenneth Charlette. And they formed a show called Truth Hurts about the intergenerational impacts of residential schools. The symbol behind me is the Circle of Voices logo. It's the very foundation of SNTC's being. And the symbols here all represent the men and the women in the circle, utilizing their voices. We've kept this symbol, and this will always be a trademark of the uh, COV program. My mentor, Kenneth Charlotte, was the founding artistic director of SNTC. 
And his words are, culture and the arts are intertwined and part of the human makeup. I never knew what that was when I first walked in. I was 26 years old, uh, walked into the program, sat in a circle with 25 other young people my age, and those were the first words I heard. Culture and the arts are intertwined and part of the human makeup. I was thinking to myself, I don't want to hear that. I want to know how to become rich and famous. I want to be working with Adam Beach on the big screen. I want the ladies, the Esquewak, to be swooning over me when they see my picture. <laughs> Don't tell me culture and arts are intertwined. That doesn't help me. And for the longest time, I kept those words in my mind, thinking about what does that mean? What the heck does that mean to me, a young person, Aboriginal, a man? walking out in society every day having to justify my identity as an Aboriginal man, and now working today in this day and age, having to do the same as an artist. What, are the, what do these things mean? Let's take a look at some of our young people. SNTC is very proud to provide mentorship to all of the young people who come through our Circle of Voices program. Many of those young people today are, are productive members of our community. We have a residency each and every year and in this residency, we take in a young person from the COV program, primarily, preferably, and they are engaged in our professional season. They work with the Circle of Voices program. They are mentored professionally in all of our professional productions for the year. They could be acting one show. They could be an assistant director in another show. One of the young ladies that came to us, her name is Ingrid Gomez. Ingrid is new to Canada. She's been here for about six or seven years now, and she just got her Canadian citizenship. And she came to SNTC for an interview and said, I am not an Indian, but I know and have an awareness of the cultures of Saskatchewan, and I would like to be a part of this program. Let's hear what she had to say following. For those of you who can't see, in the last few months, I was granted a wish to see the world from a different point of view. By joining COV, not only did I get to learn about theater, but I got to see and be part of a different culture which somehow I felt related to. And with that came unforgettable moments, challenges, opportunities, incredible people, inspiring strangers, and moments that marked me, meaning moments that opened me and touched my heart, my soul, my dreams. I have always been the type to explore what is different or what I can't comprehend. I am quite the open-minded individual who is always curious and excited to learn and try something new. To my awesome new friends who welcomed me into your lives, without each other, we couldn't have made it this far. To my family who supported me and reminded me every day that giving up is never the answer. To the SNTC people, staff, who shared incredible moments with me and taught me about uniqueness, compassion, professionalism, and being human and to our elder, whose wise words always were there when you need it the most, even when you don't realize you need them. To our audiences who came and helped us give a memorable show, thank you. I am grateful for you all. You are what made this journey a wonderful one for me. I wish you all nothing but the best, great moments and opportunities to head your way. Padamia. You guys should come with, uh, up with a gluten-free bannock recipe, just saying. <laughs> Ingrid Gromez is now our mentee resident for the season. She's going to be uh, hitting the stage, the professional, professional stage, for the first time in Drew Hayden Taylor's Crease in the Caribbean, and we're very, very proud of Ingrid. A young lady, Jennifer Bishop, came into the program, came into SNTC when the doors first opened. When those doors opened, here was this little 12-year-old girl. There are no right words to describe my experience with COV. I wasn't afraid to be myself and open up, and I will never forget the people I've met or the beautiful art we made together. Jennifer Bishop from 1999. And today, she has come full circle. She is now running the COV program. She's working with the professionals, and she's guiding all the young people on their journey throughout the program. Of course, there's culture. I mentioned culture. We do theater, culture, and career development. One of the anchors of, of the SNTC being, the family, is our elder, John Sugar. Everybody knows John. 
I probably don't have to go into too much detail. He does great work in this community, and he works with all of our young people in the Circle of Voices program, leading culture from both the Lakota and the Cree traditions. All of the young people are very, very in tune with this man, and each and every year he leads our ceremonies, he leads our special events, and he even partakes in the program by taking part in the workshops, and this past year he was a performer on the stage as well. So John Sugar, our resident elder, very, very key, a very key component to the SNTC family and our whole history. <clears throat> now the Circle of Voices program, we think of it as a safe place to play. Where in the world can you bring in young people and say, we want to hear what you think? We want to pass you the rock. We want you to sit in the circle. And we want you to share anything that is important to you. Anything you feel. How was your day? Giving young people that opportunity to share their voice, their minds, their hearts, and their being. This rock here was gifted to me by storyteller uh, Joseph Neitauhau, who had been out up north one day near La Ronge, and he said he found this beautiful heart-shaped rock in the creek, pulled it out of the water. I went and did a storytelling session at the public library, and after that presentation, he came up to me and gifted me this rock. I, in return, paying it forward, gifted this rock to the Circle of Voices program, and each and every time the young people get together for that smudge and that talking circle, this is what they take with them. So this rock is very dear to us, and it holds many, many stories. Powerful, powerful stuff. The COV program allows us to give voice to young people. We talk about the culture, we talk about the language, we talk about the history in those circles, and John leads in coordination and conjunction with our COV coordinator, moving everything forward. Like today, today we move forward. I was really, really surprised and happy to walk into this building today and see indigenous space. I'm very, very excited about indigenous spatialization in places that are not so indigenous. And in Saskatoon, we're doing a really, really good job here. The Circle of Voices program is a part of this new tradition here in Saskatoon. We address issues that are relevant to young people, to the community. Um, over the years, the COV program has produced plays on homelessness, gangs, drugs and alcohol, crystal meth, suicide, all throughout the years. And this year, we, we focused specifically on the current, contemporary, and traditional identity. So in terms of learning for these young people, they take these things with them, and they come from the circle themselves. We develop a sense of identity, a reclamation of identity, a solidarity. I was talking to a friend of mine, and uh, I told her, I want your phrase. She said, it's a solidarity thing. I told her, you know, I take my coffee. I don't use cream. I use the powdered white stuff. And I don't use sugar, I use uh, honey in my coffee. And she goes, holy, you're just real Cree. <laughs> and I said, it's a solidarity thing. So I stole her phrase, and I'm very happy about that. Uh, the young people who have, have come out of our program are, like I said before, are contributing members of the community. And uh, many of them, as John shares with us, are even sun dancers. They're taking that cultural journey. They're oscapios. They're helping out in the community with ceremonies, special events. They're leading community initiatives, such as clothing the community, where at the Core Neighborhood Youth Co-op, they take donations of winter clothes, and the young people themselves go out in the community and give them to people. You need a jacket. Stay warm. Clothing the community, an initiative that comes out of the circle of voices from those COV alumni. Many, many people, there are many, many great stories about all the people who have come out of the Circle of Voices program. But that's not what SNTC is all about. You see, there was years ago, people used to say, I, re I remember this, a teacher came up to me and said, I had a young people come up to me, a young person come up to me, and he was asking about your Circle of Voices program. But his words were, do I have to be screwed up to get into that program? Do I have to have problems to be in that program? That old stigma of being Aboriginal and in a program. The things that we think of, hey? And we said, no, we want passion. We want commitment. 
And there were times, there was a time when people would not even look in SNTC's direction or the COV, and now we're turning people away from the program because we just have too many people that want in. So we're very, very happy about the landmarks and the trailblazing that we've made in terms of Indigenous identity, ways of being, and ways of knowing. But as I said before, that's not what we're all about. SNTC has professional programming. We bring shows to the stage. Doing theater is not an easy thing. It's always a hit and miss. And as an artistic director, I'm responsible for selecting the programming. Scripts come to me. People come to me. You should think about doing this show. You should do this show. And I have to sit there and go through all of this and go, ay, 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 I hope people like. That's what you do. You hope. It's like smudging a prayer, right? You hope people will want the programs that you provide for them. Um, over the years, one of the programs, one of the productions that we've provided over the years has been the tradition the, of the Res Christmas story at SNTC. This has been going on since 2001. A, group of a young group of people came together and the artistic director said, I want you guys to create a show. I want you to res up Scrooge. I want you to do something with it. So we all did. We all pitched in. We all contributed a piece of writing, saved it on a computer. 11 days before rehearsal, the computer crashes, and we didn't save anything. And we were like, oh my god, what are we going to do? And so I stood up, and I said, well, I saved my notes. I have some notes. And automatically, before I could finish the thought, you're writing it. You're writing it, Curtis. You could finish the play. And I went, oh, great. I had to open my big mouth. That's how the uh, Res Christmas story came to be, and it started with Ms. Purdy Parsimonious, a Res Christmas Carol. The most recent was called Nichimus. Nichimus in Cree uh, means sweetheart. And uh, this was presented most recently. It was the final Res Christmas story. And uh, I'm very, very proud of this production because we're talking today, folks, about education, about learning, about ways of knowing. With this particular production, we had three actors, Cree, Métis, uh, Soto, and one, Denny. <laughs> and uh, these three young people were all adoptees. They had grown up in white families, no connection to their heritage, to their culture, or their identity. And through Nichimus, the Christmas production, I always write Cree. And I always give it to the young people. I give them the script and I go, well, there you go. You're going to learn Cree and you're going to speak Cree on stage during this show. I know you're Dene, but you're going to Cree. We're going to indigenize you this way. And we always go from the tradition of the territory. We're in Treaty 6 territory, the territory of the Cree. So we utilize and we share first and foremost from the Cree tradition. These young people uh, got to visit communities that they never have visited before. Dalton was talking. He said, I never even been to this many reserves in my whole life. I didn't know there were reserves this many in Saskatchewan. I've never seen so many faces in the audience that were my relations and telling my story on that stage. All of these young people were empowered because I'm talking about empowerment. They were giving their voice. I talked about voice, expression, entertainment, telling a story an indigenous story and sharing it on that stage to heal, humanize, and bring people together. And finally, to empower the young people who get that sense of identity, who are connected to their own ways of being and ways of knowing. The young people in this program, from left to right, Corey Standing from Wapaton Beardies, a uh, young lady, Dakota Hebert from Meadow Lake, she is of Diné, uh, our great friend, the late Lacey Morin, very beautiful young lady, passed on recently. We're moving on to tradi the tradition, keeping her in mind and in spirit. And of course, Dalton Lightfoot, whose family, he says, comes from, I believe, the Muskeg Lake First Nation. And so he's now exploring that tradition and that identity of his, of his being. So all of these young people were very, very empowered by the experience of being involved in the Red Christmas play, a comedy of all things. So we're very, very proud of how they got to be connected to themselves. In terms of our main stage programming, we did a show a couple of years ago that I was really nervous about called The Hours That Remain. It was written by a good friend of mine, Keith Barker, a couple of years ago. 
And this show was particularly themed around the issue of missing and murdered Indigenous women. It was a three-hand cast, and the story was of a, of a woman looking for her sister, wondering where her sister went and wondering what happened. When I read the script, I thought this would be a very, very important show to bring to our community, but I knew it would be hard because as an audience member, you're not necessarily looking first and foremost for that entertainment medium that could potentially disturb you, that could potentially shock you, that could make you cry. That's not the intent here. The intent with a show like The Hours That Remain was best said by the president of NWAC, the National Women's uh, Association of Canada, um, Native Women's Association of Canada came and she seen the show and she talked to us after and she said a speech and she goes, you know, we have, what I love about theater and the arts is that we have the pictures online, we have the stories, we have the heartache, but what SNTC has done with this show by bringing it, bringing it on stage is they're bringing the issue to life in a very, very important way that will never have us forget the issues itself. So, ways of being, ways of knowing in terms of what we do on stage, it's that human, human component that my, my mentor talked about at SNTC. And we do it through a lot of our programming. The hours that remain garnered us uh, a lot of recognition and shows. I want to talk again now about ways of being in terms of language. Last year, we did uh, Shakespeare and Cree. And we called it to Cree or not to Cree. <laughs> and we asked some of our young people, we got permission from our elder to use his uh, Sundance buffalo skull. And I said, I have a vision myself. I want to see an indigenous person, a young person with a headdress holding up that skull, much like in the Shakespeare show, when the guy's doing that with the skull. I want to see that. Can we do that? And he goes, yes, let's do it. We created this poster with that image down there, to Cree or not to Cree, March 22nd last year. The reason why I want to talk about this is because a friend of mine, um, uh, Daryl, Daryl Chamakis, uh, said to me, there's a Cree word, Curtis, that I think, that I think you'd be interested in. He said, Gagi Simuin. And I said, what's that? He goes, Gagi Simuin. It means speaking spiritually. And I went, that's interesting to me. Hmm. And he goes, why? Because my mentor, Kenneth Charlotte, always told me that the stage is a sacred place. We treat it with the same respect that we would treat ceremony. When we tell a story, when we bring ourselves out in front of an audience and bear it all, we take that courageous step. It's very ceremonial. And I went, well, okay, I'll take that, sure. Works for me. Gagi Simwin, speaking spiritually, in essence, could be interpreted as the monologue in theater. In theater, the monologue is spoken externally or internally. You're either speaking to yourself or to a being, or you're speaking with a person on stage. Um, this is something that I'm exploring now and I want to try to incorporate as I pursue a master's degree in the arts. I'm very interested in how language and the arts work together. And I think we, 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 we were getting there with this particular project because I'll tell you, two worlds came together with to Cree or not to Cree. I've been in theater now for like 14, 15 years and people, the non-indigenous community kind of looks in my direction and goes, how come I don't see you at Shakespeare shows? How come I don't see you at Persephone shows as much as I see everybody else? And I think to myself, well, it's not that I don't like the shows. It's just that I don't have an access point. Through, through To Cree or Not To Cree, this initiative, this language initiative, what we did is we took select Shakespeare text and we translated it into the Cree language. I was very interested in what that was going to be for me as an audience member. One of the things I can tell you is that people have always said, Romeo and Juliet is a comedy. It's an absurd comedy. And when I go to a, a Shakespeare show, I go and stand in the audience, and I've sat in Romeo and Juliet, and I'd go like this. I wouldn't get it. 
I didn't have access point into that world of Shakespeare, I'd leave going, I don't know what the heck was going on. Why, why did I do that? Why did I spend two hours of my time doing that? But through the Cree language, I saw two young people speak in Cree. I saw Romeo and Juliet. It was the scene where, oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? And when you hear that expressed in the Cree language, I'm not a fluent Cree speaker, it is so hilarious watching two young Cree people, Dante, Dante, Romeo. Kisagi didn't Romeo. And for the first time in my life, I went, oh my God, I get Shakespeare now. I see what they're talking about. It's so absurd. King Lear, there's a scene in King Lear where he's holding his daughter. And our elder John Sugar took part in that reading. He lifts up the woman, this young woman who was in the cast, and he's carrying her on stage, and he's reading his Cree on the paper. And when he started reading, I went, wonder what's going to happen. Here's a man holding his daughter. He kneeled down, and he started delivering his monologue. His monologue was to God about losing his daughter. I saw this man say prayer, Lakota prayer. He interpreted from a Lakota tradition. And he started doing the, huh, you could hear the moaning and the crying and the mourning and the pain in his words. And I went, ah, I get Shakespeare now. I understand what they're talking about. I've been granted access into the Shakespeare world through my own tradition. So if we're talking about ways of learning, ways of being, ways of knowing, I think the theater artist is very much a theater knower, a knowledge holder, and a knowledge keeper. And I think we need to validate these theater artists in our community who take these courageous steps to come out in front of an audience and give it all they got. I think there's value in that. So when we talk about education, we also have to talk about expression, entertainment, and empowerment especially when it comes to the cultural arts. I want to introduce you and talk to you about a young man. We'll call him Neil. Neil, like many people in his demographic and age category, grew up normalized in lateral violence. Alcohol in the home, a young man who went through physical abuse, emotional abuse, intellectual abuse, and spiritual abuse. Took his first drink when he was four years old. He was already doing drugs by the time he was 10 and had attempted to take his life many, many times throughout his life. And this young man is a COV alumni. And uh, he came into the circle not knowing what to expect, bringing in pain, bringing in anger, bringing in confusion. Who am I? What am I doing here? What am I doing on this friggin' planet? This young man had faced many, many things throughout his education, throughout his experience in the arts. And I think there is something in that because there's something universal about those young people who come in with that in their minds, in their hearts, and in their bodies. I wanted to share that right really quick. Coming down towards the end of my presentation, mentorship, as I said, is very, very important to SNTC. We're always in succession planning mode. We're always looking to our young people, giving them direction, giving them that experience so they can move forward. I think young people are the breadth of SNTC. And as we move forward into the next Circle of Voices program, we are going to look into incorporating elders as COV alum into our program. We want to start talking about more inclusivity. We want to talk about bringing the non-Indigenous community into our space and share in our ways of knowing and being and practicing. Kenich always said to me, we have a council. If the stage is a sacred place, we must have those that have passed on before us, those artists who sit on a council, and they watch over the other artists, and they guide them. 
I happen to believe that's very, very true with the arts in this day and age. I think it's very, very important that we start thinking about these things, how the arts play an important part in our community, how the arts contribute to a better community, to a more beautiful place. We're not there yet, but we're getting there, and artists are paving the way in Saskatoon. Oh, and uh, I guess I'd like to close today again by thanking Chris and thanking Irene for bringing me up here and thanking you all for listening. A final note about the young man that I talked about, the young man who had gone through everything. He was that young man that most people would think he's going to end up dead, he's going to end up in jail, or he's going to end up in welfare. But the exact true that young man actually stands before you today. And I am now working as the artistic director at the Saskatchewan Native Theatre Company. Mm -hmm. So thank you again, folks, for listening. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you got something out of today. And I hope you have a great, great afternoon. Hi, hi. And ask one.